everybody, this is Audrey Mack uh, for the Gospel of this week. Um, this week I'm going to share something that you probably wouldn't expect um, or want to hear, but I believe it is a now word. Uh, with what's going on all over the world, we are seeing Christian being more and more persecuted. Yes, even here in the U.S. and in the West. And so I want to talk today about how to respond to persecution. Amen. Um, it's interesting that Jesus actually uh, warned us um, that we would suffer persecution. Listen to John 15. In verse 18 through 20, he says, If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Remember the word that I've spoken to you. A servant is not greater than the master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus pretty much told us, expect persecution. I mean, we've been really blessed in, in the West, you know, just to see that we have not um, had a lot of persecution to be, but it's starting. And, you know, that's interesting that Paul even said, he says, anyone that wants to live godly will suffer persecution. He even said in First Thessalonians chapter 3, if you look at the verse 1 through 4, it even sent Timothy, you know, to the church to warn them so that they would be encouraged, they would be established. And he told them, no one thing, we are appointed to this, which is persecution. And he says, and, and, and know uh, 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 that you, we warned you that you would suffer persecution just as it happened. And so persecution is something that you and I have to be warned about, prepared about, so we can also be established and encourage and know how to respond. So how do we respond? Well, in the study of the word, I discovered that our first response is that we should rejoice. You mean what? Really? Yes, that should be our first response. Do you remember when the disciples, right when the church was created in the book of Acts, Peter and John prayed for a man who got completely healed and immediately persecution happened. Immediately they were thrown into jail, they were beat up and they were forbidden to speak in the name of Jesus. And they came back and you know what the, what the Bible said? That they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. You know why we can rejoice? Because you and I, it means that we start looking acting and walking like Jesus. And that is what we want to do, isn't it? And so we first have to realize, you know what? It's not personal. It's not against me. It's against the kingdom of God. So I can rejoice. But you know what we, we need to do in order to face that persecution? We need to start worshiping God and we need to start praying and in other tongues. You know, praying in the spirit is going to build you up on your most holy faith and it's going to give you boldness. You know, boldness is what the disciple prayed. They say, God, give us more boldness that we may speak your word with all boldness as we ought to. So worshiping God and Praying in another tongue will keep you strong in your faith. And you know what it will do? It will release the grace of God. Remember when Paul was being persecuted in 1 Corinthians 12, he begged God, he prayed that God would remove, amen, the persecution. And God says, Paul, I can because, and I paraphrase, it's part of the territory. It is part of the call of a disciple, but... There is a grace and my grace will be sufficient for you. And God's grace is his strength, his divine ability. And when we start worshiping God and praying in another tongues, we are tapping into that grace. We are being strengthened in our faith and filled with the spirit. And finally, you know what we need to do, how to respond to that persecution, we need to respond in love. That's why we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to worship God. It will keep our eyes focused on God, God who is love, 
filled with the Spirit, the Spirit who is love, and it will keep us and help us to respond in love. You know, this is what Jesus commanded in Matthew 5, verse 44. He says, I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. You see, this is what Jesus told us to do. And do you know that when we choose to love uh, uh, the persecutor and respond in love, do you know what will happen? It will turn out as a testimony for you. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 12 and 13. Jesus said before all of these, they shall lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and put you into prison, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it shall turn out to you for a testimony. And I love that. You know, the Apostle Paul that had been persecuted more than anybody. You know, even remember when he was in, in Philippi, he had delivered a young woman from a demon, the spirit of Python, and he was thrown into jail, beat up, you know, and here he is. In the, you know what he did? He chose to worship God and sing out loud the praises of God. And you know what happened? He not only found strength and was able to keep his eyes on God, but it all of a sudden there was an earthquake, earthquake in the place. The chains broke, the doors opened, uh, uh, and there was a revival. A revival happened in the jail. The jailer got saved, the prisoners stayed, you know, and, and, and we saw that because of he chose to worship God and tap into the grace, he, a revival happened. And he also chose to respond in love because he told the, the jailer, he could have been angry. He could have said, hey, forget about you. But he said, no, 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 we are all here. And then he, the jailer came and he shared the gospel with him and revival. His whole family got saved. That, his response in love turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. This is what Paul said in Philippians 1.12. He said, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things that have happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And that's what happened in Philippi. And that's what happened everywhere Paul went and he was persecuted, stoned, beat up. But you know, it's, it's amazing. This is how Paul came to the gospel. You say, what do you mean, Audrey? You remember when uh, uh, the first martyr, Stephen, was stoned to death? And how did Stephen respond? He looked up and he said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And the glory of God, I mean, his faith was shining. And Paul, who was Saul at the time, saw him. He heard it. He was holding the clothes and the coats of those who were throwing the stone. And you know it's interesting because as Paul was wanting to persecute all the Christians and put them into jail, going from town to town on the road of Damascus, he heard a voice and he saw a light shine. And he fell from the horse and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard to kick against the pricks. And you're like, what did Jesus mean? It is hard to kick against the pricks because what Paul saw or Saul, what he saw, if Stephen glorified and loving the persecutors, saying, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's what Saul, Saul saw. That's what he heard. And every day after that, when he was laying down quiet on his bed, you know what happened? That's all he could see. That's what he could hear. And that became a prick in his heart. It would not leave him alone. And, and, it, 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 and he continually could hear those words, see those pictures of Stephen glory. And that's what that prick that drew him into the gospel. That that day he fell from the horse and he kneeled down and said, Lord, Lord, 
what will you have me do? And that's how Paul got saved. So you see, my friend, when we choose first to keep our eyes on God, to be filled with the Spirit and respond in love, whatever persecution happens to you, that can turn out as a testimony to the persecutor and bring him to the Lord. What better revenge than bringing your persecutor to the Lord and to bring him to Jesus. Oh, I hope that has prepared. I believe it will encourage you, it will establish you, and it will prepare you if persecution come your way. God bless you and see you next week.